We're just going to cover how to uh, download the Quick Tune software from Novus Automation. So just type Novus Automation into Google, um, you'll get to the main website. I'm going to move over here into Downloads software. And you can see pretty much our third result there is Quick Tune Configurator. And it's just a straightforward download and install with Windows. Obviously, I've got it pre-installed, so I'm just going to open up the, the project here. So you can see we've got a few options there. Read device. So if we had a device plugged in, we could read it straight away. But what we've done is we've opened up an existing program. So we've got all of our parameters in here ready to go. And we have our brand new N20K48, which we're going to plug in shortly. Just going to go through a few of the basic settings. So temperature unit, yes, Celsius, control mode. Uh, by default, it's manual. We always want automatic. And enabling the control, yes. So sensor type, we've gone for a type K here. And we know for this particular process, uh, it looks like about 250 max. So we've capped the set point at 300, which is always a pretty good idea to stop um, people putting in silly values, really, and uh, making the controller behave in a way it shouldn't. The main set point, we've just set that to 20 degrees for now. Output A, that's your control. So that's going to go to your solid state relay for heating. And output 2, or output B, uh, that's an alarm, so the relay is going to operate and we're going to use that to uh, cool the process down at the back end of the program. Um, so we're going to sort of basically help it to, uh, to reach room temperature quicker between cycles. Auto-tune, I've gone for the uh, precise and self-adaptive, but normally um, the fast option is fine. Uh, you can ignore that, we, we won't change that, but this is to do with the Bluetooth comms, it's just the uh, the device ID. And we're going to move over now and have a look at the features. So, a lot of these are, are duplicated, um, you can see we've got a Type K, we're not filtering the input signal, we're going to assume that's fine. Um, Celsius, no decimal points, no offsets. With lower limit of zero is fine, we can cope with that. And then here is where we've configured our output. So output A, as the control output, that's going to be your pulse to the solid state relay. And output B, it's going to be a relay contact um, to bring that fan on. Into control, again, duplicated, control mode automatic. Heating is the control action. And we're calling here program one. Program one is the ramp and soak program, um, which I've just set up. And we'll talk more about that shortly. And upper limit again, 300, control enabled, yes. Tuning, yes, we are precise and self-adaptive. And alarms. So what we've done is we've pointed alarm one at the ramp and soak functions. Um, all of the other alarms are off and we haven't set anything else um, within the alarm menu. But once we get into the ramp and soak programs, um, you'll see more about how the alarm's gonna work. So into the ramp and soak, the program type, you've got a straightforward ramp and soak, um, but we are, and obviously the option not to use a program at all, so just a single set point, um, and the controller will maintain that as long as it's set to run. Um, but we've actually got a program here. So there's two or three different ways of, of approaching this really. You can input these parameters um, directly with the keypad, which, which can be a bit long-winded, um, particularly with a complicated program. But what you actually see here on QuickTune is all of the parameters that you would get within the sub-menu on the controller itself. And my preference here is to actually use the ramp and soak tool. So if we click here, you can see um, graphically we're starting at 20 degrees C and jumped across. And our first set point is 150 C. 
and then we've got our duration in minutes and seconds and it will also show you the rate here um, now what we're doing when we get up to here if we just click this icon show events can you see the alarm bell here and here that's going to bring that relay on and help us to cool down quicker and the overall cycle time there is, is five minutes now you can adjust these very simply up and down with the arrows for a longer time or a higher or lower set point um, but the theory is we start at 20 degrees C and we're going to ramp up to 150 and we're going to do that within one minute and 10 seconds now obviously the way the oven behaves um, a lot of that is uh, is down to how it's laid out, um, sort of the heat density, um, where the sensor is, lots and lots of different variables. So really before you start with the program, it's probably best to auto tune the oven um, just with a single set point and make sure it's holding. Um, try it on a couple of different set points, progressively getting hotter and just make sure there's no overshoot there and, and the PID parameters are, are in. The AT light will, will obviously go out um, once the controller's happy. And then we would normally start to try and run programs, um, particularly the first one or two. Generally they're a test, so I wouldn't put anything valuable uh, into your oven or kiln at that point in time. Um, just check that the timings are correct and everything works as it should. Um, but the theory here is you can actually drag these around as well and manipulate the, the graph as it were and you'll see that um, the different timings will change accordingly the different set points as well um, just bring that one back down one so yeah that is uh, the basics of, of the ramp and soak um, now what we're going to do now is is just apply that and it will just write all of those values in here important one to point out is the tolerance because with a tolerance of zero the program will just execute it, it will just run and run it's not looking for, for any temperature really to be reached as such um, it's going to assume that all the temperatures are reached and, and just keep skipping on to the next segment so we normally put a, a tolerance in of three to five degrees um, and then the program will actually pause and, and just wait for it to get back into tolerance, essentially. Um, we're not using the timer here, uh, no protection. And obviously you've got your general ones, the frequency of the power grid in the UK are on 50 cycles, 50 hertz. Um, display in the auto and manual selection screen on, we always go for yes. Uh, display the program selection screen. Well, that's an important one for a ramp and soak because you want to quickly be able to change between programs or um, if you don't want a program at all, um, you want that accessible without having to delve too deeply. So that will all be accessible just with a single tap of the P button um, from what we would call the operation cycle. Um, and it's the same with the, with the run. It's very useful to be able to start and stop the process quickly without turning um, turning the controller off. So what we've got here now is, um, you can see we've just got a standard um, USB micro. I'm gonna plug that into the controller and, um, and we're gonna download the program.